Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So the big problem everybody wants to solve with large language models, LLMs, is general reasoning. And by now, there have been a number of prompting techniques to help with that, perhaps the most well-known of which is chain of thought prompting. And the basic idea behind chain of thought prompting is to ask the LLM to elucidate the steps it would take to solve a problem rather than just give you the solution to the question in the prompt outright. The paper we're looking at today is an enhancement to chain of thought prompting. The authors call it least to most prompting, but I really wish they had just called it recursive decomposition because that's what it really is. The basic idea is to break down a complex problem into simpler subproblems and then solve those simpler subproblems. And it turns out this kind of prompting enables you to get much higher performance on a range of benchmarks that test for general reasoning, symbolic manipulation with LLMs. So let's look at a very simple example. The question we want to solve is this. It takes Amy four minutes to climb to the top of a slide and one minute to slide down. If the water slide closes in 15 minutes, how many times can she slide before it closes? And the very first step in solving this is to break it into two subproblems. The first subproblem is how long does each trip take? And that becomes the first subquestion that gets tacked on to the end of the prompt. And once the LLM can figure out how long each trip takes, the next subproblem is to compute how many times she can slide before it closes. So that's the general idea of least to most prompting. You decompose the question into subquestions and ask the LLM to solve each of those subquestions. The motivation for this is to solve one of the big limitations of chain of thought prompting, which is that it doesn't do so well on problems that are harder than the examples in its few shot prompt. And the hope is this kind of recursive decomposition is going to help to solve more general problems that are different or harder than the problems that are given as examples in the prompt. Let's look at a real reasoning task that has to do with symbolic manipulation. The task we want to solve is Given a list of words, we want the string, which is the concatenation of the last letter of each of the words in the list. So, for example, if the two words in your list are thinking and machine, since G is the last letter of thinking and E is the last letter of machine, the output you want is GE. And the way we solve this with least to most prompting is to first decompose it into two problems. The first problem is to get sublists of your list. And then the second problem is to extract the last letters of each of the words within those sublists. So in your first prompt, given a list of words, you would construct all the sublists of that list. And in your second decomposition prompt, given a list of words, you would output the letters, the last letters of each of those words. Now here's the crucial recursive decomposition. When you have a list of three words here in your answer, you first refer to the solution from the sublist of its first two words. And then you take the last letter of the last word in the list and concatenate that with the solution of the sublist of the first two words, as opposed to taking the letters from each word and then concatenating it. And that is the crucial point on which least to most prompting differs from chain of thought prompting. In the chain of thought prompt, the response would have been built from scratch instead of using the output from a sublist. And here are some results of words that the authors took from Wiktionary. And you can see that when compared with chain of thought prompting, least to most prompting has some pretty significant improvements in solution accuracy. The parameter L here is the length of the list of words. 
Another set of problems the authors look at has to do with math reasoning and for this they use the by now pretty well known GSM 8K dataset which is a collection of grade school math problems, hence GSM. And let's look at this simple example from GSM. Elsa has five apples, Anna has two more apples than Elsa. How many apples do they have together? And you could solve this both with chain of thought prompting as well as least to most prompting. And now note the difference in the prompts. In least to most prompting, the focus is on breaking down this question into two simpler sub-steps. Step one is determining how many apples Anna has. And then step two is to add them up to get to 12. The chain of thought prompt is similar but does not focus on decomposing the problem into simpler steps. And here are the results they get on the grade school math set of problems. You do see an improvement though it is smaller than the last benchmark. However, if you look at drop, which is only the subset containing numerical problems, there's a much larger improvement in performance with least to most prompting. Now, as the authors point out, there is still one limitation of this technique, which is that it doesn't generalize outside the specific domain for which the prompt was constructed. So for example, using a prompt for decomposing math word problems, like in the GSM dataset, is not going to help with common sense reasoning problems that are very different from grade school math. They end with a really interesting thought, which is that currently prompting is unidirectional communication between the human and the LLM. We don't really consider the feedback that the LLM gives us. And they envision a future in which prompting is more bidirectional where the feedback can go back into the language model and help solve problems more effectively. So that was a look at another prompting technique called least to most prompting. That's a neat twist on the chain of thought prompting technique and leads to some decent improvements in performance over chain of thought. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please like the video, consider subscribing. And I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.